Welcome to Modern Infrastructure Wednesday. My name is Aaron Cal, and today we are going to deploy a data warehouse using Amazon Redshift. So my colleague Christian wrote a blog post about this sometime last year, and we're just going to go through it and uh, try to follow along and um, you know deploy a data warehouse uh, using Redshift. So what is a data warehouse? Um, it's a specialized database that's purpose built for gathering and analyzing data. So unlike general purpose databases like MySQL or Postgres, um, those are designed to meet the real time performance and transactional needs of an application. A data warehouse, however, is designed to collect and process the data produced by those applications collectively and over time to help you gain insights from that. So examples of data warehouses, warehouse products are Snowflake, Google BigQuery, Azure Synapse Analytics, and Amazon Redshift. Um, and coincidentally, all these are managed by Pulumi uh, as well. So today we're just going to focus on Amazon Redshift. Uh, specifically, we're going to walk through the process of writing a Pulumi program that provisions a single node Redshift cluster in an Amazon VPC. Uh, then we'll load some sample data into the warehouse from S3, uh, and then um, we'll show you uh, querying that data directly um, in the data warehouse. So let's get started here. Um, so we're going to first create a new uh, Plumi project, um, but we'll first create a um, new directory to holder plume project. So we'll use a my data warehouse. Okay, then we'll uh, do a polymy new and use the AWS Python template. So we'll call it the project name my data warehouse. Um, let's call project description. That. Uh, yeah, we'll take dev and then we'll deploy to US West 2. So Plume is going to go off and set up the project, pulling in all its dependencies. Okay, now that that's done, um, we'll uh, start uh, building our data warehouse. Um, so, okay, to launch a like new Redshift cluster, we'll need to give AWS a few details. So, for example, the name of the Redshift cluster, the name of the initial database, the username and password for the admin user, and the node type to use. Uh, so, I'm just going to copy this from the blog here. So with that, we can um, uh, with that we can actually open up main.py and we can get started. So, all right, the first piece of code really is uh, we're, we're just reading in the configuration value. So all the configuration settings that we passed in on the command line, we're going to pull, pull in from Pulumi conf, config um, into the stack. Um, and then we're going to create an S3 bucket that's going to store some raw data. Next, we're going to define a new VPC and associated network resources for the Redshift cluster. Um, 
since the aim is to launch the cluster into a VPC, we'll need to define the VPC first, then define a private subnet within it, and then finally designate a Redshift subnet group to tell AWS where to provision uh, that cluster. So that's each of these here. Now, the next piece of code that we're going to add to this program is um, some IAM, a IAM role. So what we're trying to do here is we're trying to pull data from an S3 bucket into Redshift. Uh, so what we'll need to do is give Redshift the appropriate permissions to read from Amazon S3. Uh, so that's what this IAM role is um, doing here. Um, and you'll see that we're only giving it uh, read-only access. So that takes care of the permission part. Now, the next part is um, to make this all work, because the cluster resides in a private subnet, that subnet actually won't have access to the public internet. So what we'll need to do is give the cluster a way to communicate with S3 without having to leave the VPC network. Uh, so we'll do this by creating a VPC gateway endpoint. Um, and this allows the cluster uh, to read from S3 over the private network. And now that we have all that done, we can get to the cluster itself. So. So here we have a single node Redshift cluster. Um, it is pulling in all the config settings, network settings, IAM roles, VPC um, settings that we defined earlier on in the code. It's all here. And then, so once the cluster is provisioned, we're gonna export uh, the data bucket name and the redshift role arm because we'll uh, use it for uh, loading in the data. All right, now that we have our program, let's save it real quick and then get back to the terminal. So we're going to do a quick Pulumi up. It's going to show us a preview of everything that it's going to provision. And then we're going to select yes to uh, start the update. So deploying this cluster takes about five, minute, five minutes, so we'll see you in a bit. Okay, it's finished provisioning everything. So now it's time to load some data. So in a real world situation, you probably already have some data to load, like web server logs or some other raw or unstructured data residing in an S3 bucket or DynamoDB table or RDS database. But uh, we're starting from scratch, so we'll create and publish that data uh, manually. So we're, we're just going to load a uh, generated text file containing a few lines of JSON, um, each representing a fictitious event to be loaded into the data warehouse. Uh, so let's this over. All right, so 
a bunch of these events, we're putting it in events1.txt. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to upload this file to S3 using the AWS CLI. And what you'll see is, uh, so we're going to do that and then we're going to take the output here and upload to that specific bucket. So it's three events. Okay. Let's copy this bucket name out here and do that. All right, now it is uploaded. All right, uh, now that we have our Redshift cluster provisioned and we got some data loaded to be ingested, uh, we can go about querying the data. Um, so let's go into our Redshift cluster here and we should be able to open up a query editor. So there is a Redshift cluster, and then we're going to um, uh, log in via the database username and password. Uh, so we had the admin and then strong one. And that should create a connection. All right, there we go. So we created a connection. And you'll see that there is a dev database that's ready to go. Um, and it just doesn't have any tables. So we'll get to that next. So we are gonna um, create a table called events, uh, which has, um, two elements, uh, my ID and a name. So run that. And there we go. Uh, next, what we're going to do is we're going to um, we're, we're going to uh, copy uh, the events that we uploaded into the S3 bucket over. So with that, we need to go back and get our bucket name. And replace it here. Uh, then back to the Polymi outputs, we'll pick up the, the IAM role. And then we'll use we use the US West two region. So we'll do that. And we'll hit run. So we'll see that um, all that stuff is copied and loaded. And lastly, we will run another uh, a new query. And what we're gonna do is just um, select all the elements from the events table and order it by ID. So let's run that. And all right, that worked. So we were able to load the S3 data and then we were able to or load the S3 data into Redshift and then be able to query for it. Uh, so these were the exact same events that we uploaded on the command line into the events one TXT uh, file. All right, so um, that was a quick example of how to um, um, create a uh, data warehouse using Amazon Redshift. Uh, so just to quickly summarize what we did. Uh, so we wrote a Polymy program that provisions a um, provisioned a single node Redshift cluster in an Amazon VPC. Uh, then we loaded some data into a S3 bucket, ingested it into Redshift, and then used the Redshift query editor to uh, look at the data.
Uh, so with that, uh, that is the end of this episode. And a future episode, we're going to uh, continue building on this data warehouse example um, and do, do some um, ETLing. So uh, thank you all for joining for another episode of Modern Infrastructure Wednesday. Uh, my name is Aaron Cow, your host.